Hey there, start here. Uh, we're going up against the Crumblier or a Crumblier, uh, however you want to pronounce it. The current Clash of Wills boss, the champion of Unknown Origin. Um, this boss is fairly thick. Um, it, it's got a, a high base HP of 1.8 billion, so they seem to be slowly uh, creeping up the, the base HP on these bosses. Um, it, it seems like the last few cow bosses have had uh, more and more base HP, probably to account for just the general power creep and whatnot. Um, but the, the boss in general is not particularly difficult to clear as long as you uh, keep a few things in mind. Um, I'll show you the, the, the team that I did just to do a standard level 99 clear. Um, I'll show you how I did it. So this is my standard level 99, just my initial level 99 clear team. Uh, no mods or anything like that. So I, um, those of you that know me and have been following me, you know I like to do a few different level 99 clear teams before I get in there to do my level, uh, my rank one uh, clear. And so um, I, I'll do a few different team compositions for just your standard level 99 clear for those of you that, you know, just like to get the clear rewards and kind of get out. Um, and then next week I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to do a rank one clear. Um, I was super happy that, uh, that Sylvie got shards in the shop after maintenance, so I immediately got her to EX3. I only needed 50 shards left to get her to EX3, so I got those immediately. Super happy about that. Um, but I know you're looking at this team and you're probably thinking, whoa, look at all these EX3 units. Um, while, uh, while you do want a strong, a fairly strong team against this one uh, to get it done comfortably, uh, you don't need to have a team loaded up with EX3s if you're just doing a level 99 clear. Um, and like I said, I'll do a few different clears trying to find that sort of that baseline um, team composition. But really, the only damage dealers I have on this team are my Esther and my NVA Golbez. Um, and so, you know, obviously you guys know I love Esther, so she's going to be coming in with, with, uh, with lots of damage. She's also going to be tanking uh, this one. And then Golbez is, is just pretty spectacular. Um, he is especially good for this because he's got that Jet Black Curse ability. Now, you have to upgrade his armor by doing the Chronicle Battle to get it. But if you get the Jet Black Curse armor, um, that will do a 150% Dark Imperil, which is the, um, that is the largest Dark Imperil we have currently. Um, and so that would be, uh, you know, it's a really smart idea to bring a Neo Vision Awakened Golbez on this one. If, you know, we, there, he's fairly easy to acquire. He's a Neo Vision Awakening. You can UOC him. Definitely, definitely bring him along if you're just, you know, struggling for, for just to clear this one. Even if you don't have like the Dazzling Demonist card and all that jazz to make him super strong, at least bring him uh, for that 150% that Dark Imperil. Uh, of course, Bulwark is here for the Dark Imbue. Um, you see I brought Neovision Awakened Seymour. He is a four-star base unit that got the Neovision Awakening in one of the recent uh, Final Fantasy X events. Um, he is useful here for the Bar Dark Jaw, which does a 200% dark buff for the team. Also provides some nice mitigations, 50% general, physical, and magical mitigation, all in one skill. Uh, very, very useful. He also does a preemptive magic cover, which we will use on the first turn. And then we'll get rid of it on turn two using Esther's uh, physical cover. Um, but it does actually kind of come in handy on, on the first turn. Um, and so, yeah, I, I kind of, uh, I'll show you how it goes once we get in there. Um, real quick, as far as the, the gear is concerned, Sylvie's going to be the Passive Provoke unit. Uh, so Dancer's Diadem for the Passive Provoke, a couple of Blizzard Orbs for some counters. Um, she won't really need that um, to do the counters, but it's always nice to have them there. It's pretty much the exact same build in both forms, just bulk and, um, and, and, and the counters. Yeah, that's all she really needs. Um, <clears throat> You do want to keep in mind that all your units need to be charm resistant because the boss does an, uh, an ambush, uh, AOE charm ambush. Uh, now Sylvie is naturally uh, resistant to charm, so that's perfect. Don't have to worry about that for her. Um, Esther is also naturally resistant to charm, so don't have to worry about that either. Uh, you see I've, I've gone ahead and picked up the um, the Celestite Chainmail of Will. That's the, the, new, that's the newest cow gear that we have. 
um, and I went ahead and upgraded that all the way up to the rulers upgrade because that is the only one that's worth upgrading in my opinion for the moment. Um, there might be some niche uses for some of the other upgrades but for now the rulers is really the only one. They don't have a magister's upgrade so there's no like chain cap up or anything like that. Uh, they have a chain ramp upgrade. Um, don't be fooled by that. It looks nice because you see the 200% chain damage boost. That is a chain ramp damage not chain limit boost. Don't be confused by that one. So the ruler is, is currently the best upgrade on that one. Uh, and then a Magister's Ring and an Emperor's Ring. Um, just to, you know, totally deck out my bunny. Uh, a couple of slots open because she honestly doesn't need anything. If you have her card plus, uh, plus Bahamut Esper equipped to her, then she naturally caps Stone and Reaper easily. Easy, easy, easy. Alright, very easy to gear for this fight. Uh, in her tank form, a pretty standard tank gear here, a blizzard orb for counters, Runda's shield, um, and then, yeah, just, you know, standard bulk, nothing really specific here, uh, just, you know, good defense and HP to bulk her up, yeah. Uh, she does need her, um, she does need her, uh, her trust master in there, um, that is just to give her 20 LB fill at the beginning, so she can cast a couple of abilities. Um, Cacteria will be, um, you know, obviously there for the breaks. Uh, Obsidian Bracer is just for, you know, any kind of preemptive anything. Um, I always sort of like to keep that on her for preemptives. Uh, otherwise, yeah, she's got first rate Treasure Hunter for the Charm Resist. Um, and that is, I believe that is Adventurer Locks TMR, uh, if I'm, yeah, his Trust Master. And so that's the, the five star base lock. Um, so I've got several of those. You can pick those up. That's a great source of charm resist. You can also do Crescent Moon Charm, which is Neovision Tifa's um, uh, STMR. That's good for physical damage units. Um, you'll see on my Golbez, I have um, Curl Floaty. That is uh, Beach Bui Shinju's uh, STMR, and that also comes with charm resist. So I put that on my uh, on my goal as to make sure he was charm resistant uh, the weapon is brumal cores because you know I, I didn't want to go all out on uh, on my goal um, I with this team a better slot in here would actually be fry Evia's STMR because it comes with Reaper killer on it um, and Sylvie can do a sword and peril for him um, and, and so you know if if you have uh, Fryavia's STMR, definitely put it on Golbez here, because he can naturally equip swords, and Sylvie will take care of the sword in peril. Of course, if you're bringing Tsukiko, then Tsukiko supplies a rod in peril, and you can stick with a rod on uh, on your Golbez. Just whatever it is, make sure that it's two-handed. Um, so I upgraded the Brumal cores uh, to make it a two-handed rod. Um, and yeah, so, so that's a pretty good one. Obviously wearing his uh, STMR, the Curse upgrade. Um, Ruler's crown, because he needs a helmet. Um, indestructible light for chain cap up and then just some undead and stone killer as well as uh, had to make sure he was capped on his TDH there. So he is not going to be maxed out. Dazzling Demonist card obviously. He's not going to be maxed out on killers. He's only 200 stone, 225 reaper but it's okay. He's strong enough uh, that he is he's going to definitely um, help us clear this fight. Um, you don't really need anything specifically for um, Seymour. Um, just make sure he's got his, his TMR, STMR, and um, then yeah, just some general bulk. Um, I gave him, I gave him a lot of MP um, uh, MP reduction gear because uh, this ability. Sorry, uh, the ability. Where is it? Where is Bardark? Uh, there it is, Bar Darkja. So it normally costs 500 MP to cast, which is a lot. And so, just I, you know, I, I I gave him maximum MP reduction because I was I was concerned there might be some MP drain or something like that, and he wouldn't be able to cast it when I needed it. Um, and so, with with maxed out uh, MP reduction, that brings the cost down to 100, which is a lot more manageable. So that's all that that gear is for. You don't necessarily need it. Um, we're not going to be uh, getting that much uh, MP reduction, uh, or sorry, MP drain on this fight. Um, Eye of the Dragon is just so he can chain with Esther, right? The, uh, the Extreme Nova chaining skill. So you know, uh, give him anything you can for uh, for that. 
Uh, if you have like a lone swordsman card that works as well uh, again first rate treasure hunter for the charm resist on him uh, a good a better alternative to seymour would be the new uh, dark knight cecil uh, the neovision cecil that just came out and uh, you would start cecil in his um in his normal form to get the lb field and then switch him to his brave shift form and cast bar darja or Actually, no, sorry, it's not Bardarcha. He doesn't have that ability, but he has something similar that does a 200% light and dark buff to the team, and that's what you really want. You want that big dark buff to make sure you don't take any dark damage. Um, and yeah, just power cut. I just gave him, I just wanted to bulk him up to make sure he didn't die. Um, Bulwark is here strictly for the uh, for the dark imbue. He's gonna be hanging out in his brave shift form the whole time, so he doesn't really need anything. Just first rate treasure hunter to make sure he's charm resistant. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, so there's the team. Uh, let's see how we get this one done in four turns. Uh, you could probably do it faster, but four turns is what you need to make sure all the mitigations wear off. You have to hit the boss with one of its weak elements, uh, that being water, uh, dark, water, or light. It is weakest to dark with a 30% natural imperil uh, and a 15% natural imperil to water and light. Uh, but as long as you hit it with one of those weaknesses, every turn it will slowly reduce the mitigations until you have nothing by turn four and you can just hit it with everything you got it is a reaper and stone uh, boss it likes to use earth and dark um, attacks and that's why we bring good earth buffs and uh, dark buffs on the team it will inflict stone charm uh, and it says instant ko but i haven't actually seen any any instant ko attacks um, in, in any of the clears, so I haven't accounted for that. Hopefully we won't run into that though. <laughs> I don't think we will. Um, all right, so let's get in here and see how we do this. So turn one is just basically a, uh, a setup turn. So you saw that dark enslavement preemptive. That was the AOE uh, charm, that charm ambush. So luckily we're all innately charm resistant, so no one has to worry about that. Okay, so turn one, Seymour has a magic cover, um, and, and that's fine. We're not gonna, we, we don't mind that at all um, for the first turn, because um, he, he'll, he'll jump out in front of Esther um, and stop her from doing her physical cover, but it's fine on turn one because we're going to have Sylvie do some Mirage. So all Seymour is going to do this turn is bar Darkja. Bulwark is going to go ahead. Uh, we'll do Churrup just for some Morale Fill and Shadow Serenade to imbue. Uh, Golbez is just going to start his Jet Black Curse, so that way we get the 150% Dark Imperil on turn four when we go in for the kill. Cacteria does her usual um, Million Needle Assault. Uh, and then armor and mental breaking needle. So that's a 90% attack and mag break, and then 89% defense and spirit break, and those all last for five turns. So that'll that'll last us as long as we need it to. Uh, Sylvie will do her usual, uh, we'll do Paladin's Defense for the Mirage, uh, we'll do Elemental Vines for the Earth buff, and then Compassionate, uh, oh, no, actually, sorry, we're not gonna do Compassionate Knight on this turn. Um, we're gonna do Burgeoning Defense, for the uh, for the general mitigation, we'll do compassionate knight next turn. All right. Um, actually, nope. Sorry, Esther's going to stay in brave shift form. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, she'll just do energizing bunny. That's going to supply a 120% stone and reaper killer to the team. Uh, Sylvie will obviously provide a bigger uh, stone killer for the team, but it's still nice having that reaper killer from Esther. All right, so Energizing Bunny and a Double Shatter Bolt just for some morale fill. All right. So yeah, there we go. We've got Seymour jumping out in front. Um, everything was resisted. Uh, all of the attacks are missing. Um, Sylvie will take some single target attacks, but she's bulky enough with the mitigations that we don't really need to worry about it. Lots of counters. Just, I'm just glad the boss doesn't do zombie, <laughs> or else Sylvie would be uh, killing us right now. Okay, 
Um, Esther is just going to do Storm Defender to Erase. Oh, sorry. <laughs> She's not going to do that. She's going to do Electromagnetic Shield first uh, because that does a 75% physical mitigation. So then she does Storm Defender, right? followed by a Shatterbolt. All right, Sylvie will now do Elemental Petals, Elemental Vines, and Compassionate Knight. All right, Seymour can honestly just guard. So can Golbez. Uh, Bulwark can do Chirrup and Moogly Mixtape for some morale fill. Uh, and Cacteria can honestly just guard. Actually, what I'll have Cacteria do real quick is we'll just do a, uh, a quick Libra on the boss just for your, you know, for all of our sakes here. All right, so just showing you the boss has 1.8 billion HP for a base. So if you're doing any kind of um, HP mod, uh, mods, just know that they that's what your base. And so any HP mods, like 100%, means you're going to be dealing with uh, 3.6 billion total HP, right? Uh, but there you can see the resistances, 30% um, at, at dark, so that's uh, that's the, the element you want to go for if you want an easier clear. Unless you have like really strong water or really strong light amps, you could potentially do more damage with those elements. Just depends on what kind of team you want to bring in here. So we're doing dark, um, and so that that's what we're going for on this clear. All right, so... Here's Esther taking it. Hello. Okay. Uh, now we're going to shift, right? Because we want Esther. Uh, just make sure. Yep. So she's she's good and still she's still very uh, very bulky even in her normal form. So she is good to go. And we'll just do our typical setup. Uh, Sylvie is going to shift and she's going to do her stone killer on, uh, or we'll do Paladin's Offense, Crack Stone on Golbez. And then if you did have Golbez wielding a two-handed sword like Fryavia's sword, the clever Paladin Strike is what would uh, do the sword in peril on the boss. Okay, uh, Seymour and the, uh, all these guys can guard again. Um, we're just going to do Chirrup, uh, Moogly Mixtape, and, um, uh, yeah, maybe just Miscophony for, uh, for fun. Um, uh, alright, so Esther's going to set up her LB. Alright, so all the mitigation should be worn off at this point. Right, so you can see all of those resist buffs we have up are keeping our team safe. No one's in any danger of dying. Um, the the boss is the boss really doesn't do a whole lot uh, of damage. I think it's just it's just really really thick uh, due to that base HP. Uh, all right, so we are pretty much ready to kill. Uh, Sylvia will do her Bray shift LB for the buffs. Golbez will do meteor. Um, we can have, uh, da, 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 da. all right, we can have Bulwark and Cacteria do some chaining just to get things going. She can use her water chain since it has uh, a slight imperil to water, um, you know, just to make sure that she's dealing damage to the boss, right? Okay, so we can start Bulwark. Um, sorry, we'll start Golbez first. Uh, start his Meteor, and then uh, we'll do Bulwark to get the chain going, uh, followed by Esther and Seymour. All right, so we'll start Golbez. And there it is. Four turns, easy peasy. And let's see how much over the base HP we did. 2.3, so we did 5 million over uh, overkill. 5 million damage overkill. So there's there's room, right? So if your your units aren't quite as strong, um, there there's a, a little bit of, of wiggle room 
in this team here. Um, you could also very easily bring just a, a stronger DPS um, in, in place of, of a certain unit. Um, if Esther's not your strongest uh, burster, you know, that's fine. Um, bring someone else like Chizuru. Chizuru will, will take care of it. Tsukiko is also good if you want to go for a light elemental team. Um, and yeah, so that's how we got that one done. Let's see the spread. Ah, Esther and, and Golbez are a pretty level. Um, of course, Golbez didn't have any kind of weapon in peril. He was also a bit short on the killers. Um, and he's still doing, you know, as much damage as my EX3 Esther on her LB. So Golbez is, is still pretty strong right um imagine if he actually had like a 30 percent weapon in peril on there and had totally decked out killers i imagine he'd be doing a lot more than my esther there all right so that's just to give you an idea of the damage and what it takes to get this one done uh so thank you guys so much i will uh, be working on some more clears for you and i will get those out as uh as soon as i have them done be working on a few one of those over the weekend and then we'll start on my rank one clear next week all right so thank you so much for following me and i will see you on the other side